What's up guys? It's Natalie casting to you at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, May 5th. Hope you can hear me here on Twitch. I have hopefully done some troubleshooting about the connection problems I had last week and I'm looking forward to a better cast today. Hey Ollie, good to see you in the chat. Welcome back for another evening of game making. I hope you're doing all right. Would love to know how your week was. You know, the week between last Tuesday and now. Uh, of course, I'm coming to you from Manhattan. I'm hearing the daily applause we get around 7 o'clock. It's always fun to hear people ringing a cowbell and clapping out the window at night to appreciate the essential workers working to keep New York City safe. So that's going on for me right now. And I'm looking forward to talking about Unity tonight. Just waiting for my uh, feed to come back around here. Already experiencing problems. Fun times. So it looks like we've got a pretty low throughput here, but I do see a green light. So we'll try to keep moving forward with the hopes that it's going to resolve itself pretty soon. I always recommend that folks uh, reload the screen if you can't hear me or can't see me. Um, sometimes when it uh, resets like that, you have to just reload the whole browser to get me back on screen. Um, but it does look like I'm here now, I'm getting some, some fair throughput at this moment. Ali, I hope you're still there watching. Um, hi, I see Christian posting in the chat. Welcome back, Christian. Good to see you tonight. And Ali is still here as well. Good to know. Awesome. Yep. So, you know, as folks are rolling in, if you guys do experience um, a connection blip, uh, Again, just reload your reload your screen and hopefully I'll come back to you. Um, I did a little bit of troubleshooting to try to make me uh, more reliable connection wise. Um, and I will be getting a faster router next week. So that'll hopefully imp improve the situation even a bit more. But until then, again, just reload the stream if you have issues. Um, and be patient if you get buffering. Um, if you do see buffering, just know that I'm working as hard as I possibly can to fix it whenever that happens. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get some good game making in tonight in Unity. And I'm really looking forward to that. So got some fun stuff on the docket. We're going to check out some details about colliders tonight. And then my hope is to return to what I was working on last week, showing some fun coding basics around setting up triggers, which was, of course, for Thomas's project. Um, so if you're just rolling in, say hi in the chat so I know who's listening. And of course, I try to make this stream be for the people who are here and live in the chat. So I saw Christian is here, and if any of our other game makers from Ucoded are joining us, as always, let, just let me know um, because I can make this stream better if I know I'm talking to you. So uh, we have a couple things to talk about just going forward here. Um, of course, it's May. Happy May, everybody. Can't remember how many weeks we've been in lockdown, but it's been more than a month now. Um, and I'm 
thinking now forward towards what we're going to work on for the next month or so in this game making studio that we're all a part of. So um, as you know, we had talked about the April challenge, which was to make a game on the topic of alone together. And in May, it's my plan to continue to work with you guys on the games you have started that reflect this theme. And we will spend the month of May working on some skills and Unity tricks to continue to develop and polish the games you've already started. Um, at my other studio, we had some fun games people were working on. Everybody's submitted, you know, a first playable or an alpha. And then here in this studio, we're still working towards getting a first playable together. Several of us are pretty close. Um, but to start the cast off, and of course, while we wait for other folks to arrive into the chat, I wanted to uh, demo for you guys the instructor game that I built with uh, another employee at Eline Media, which is, of course, my company. Um, <clears throat> we decided we wanted to make a game for the challenge too because it's a fun challenge and we wanted to show you guys the kind of game that we would make um you know in the spirit of creativity and making games themed around the pandemic so um if you're interested in playing our game you can actually play test it uh it's here on simmer.io which is a live site where you can share unity games and I'm going to kick the, the cast off today by sharing this in the chat here so you guys can play. Um, but you can also watch me play right here in the, the browser. Um, so we've got this game, again, very much themed around the pandemic. And the goal of the game is to reduce your stress by looking at flowers. So... I've got some zombies here, and if the zombies get close to me, my stress goes up. Uh, I can't click on the flowers uh, too many times here. So I should be back. Hope you guys can hear me. Oh, that was too stressful. Ha. I'm gonna try that again. All right, cool. So again, I'm back. I'm demoing my game for the challenge. And of course, you know, the idea here is you in a park. You want to look at flowers to be stress, but your stress is constantly going up. And you can only be stressed by coming over and looking at these flowers. But it's actually pretty hard to look at the flowers because the zombies are there who also increase your stress and you use up the flowers after clicking on them a certain number of times. So let's head over here. Oops. So just gonna chill and play this and let you guys absorb the vibe. Um, of course, I think I may have talked about this on the cast before, but my idea was I wanted to do a game. I was a little bit inspired by Greg with this one. Greg had also talked about the outdoor scene. And 
I like the idea of walking around in a park and thinking about how, you know, the experience of being in a park is different from the pandemic. Um, you know, just to be very relaxed and calm to go outside to a city park like the ones in Manhattan where I live. And now, you know, it's just so stressful because anybody comes near you, you need to get away from them so you don't risk getting too close and things like that. So, you know, just very much thinking about that when I made this game. And, you know, I was also interested in working on a game that had some enemy AI aspects to it. So, um, of course, part of making a game like this involves designing the zombies to walk around in the park. Let's see if I can get here without getting too stressed out. And we did some nice audio design to make it really, really, really annoying every time we get a point of stress. It's a really, really irritating sound, I think. I don't know about you guys. See, I might win this one. Almost got my stress. Down. The catch, of course, is that uh, the longer you play the game, the more zombies enter the park. So I actually have a couple areas of the park that spawn zombies as time goes on. Oh my goodness. Go away. to de-stress. Why did you back up so close to me? Alright, it looks like my connection is maybe... Nope, I'm still going. Alright. Ah! No! <laughs> Alright, I'm almost there. I'm so close. Oh no! It's really hard to go over there. They seem to like that area quite a lot. Alright, I'm gonna... Oh! Oh my gosh. Where do I go? Okay, here we go. So you get the idea. It's, it's a pretty basic prototype, right? Like, there's some gameplay here. It's not super fun yet. And, of course, haven't worked on this for about a month. Just like you guys have been working on that one. Oh my gosh, the zombie just like, ruins. Ruins my... Ugh, it's so hard. Having worked on this for the last month, I've put some thought into what would make it compelling to play and what I would maybe need to add to this game to really make it fun. So I'm curious if you guys are interested in playtesting. I would love to hear your comments because we will be working on this game throughout May and trying to improve it, make it more fun, give you more things to do. So definitely give us your thoughts and let us know what you think, uh, what you think we should change, what, what you think we should add, what would make this a really fun, really fun uh, game that reflects the theme of a little let us know. You can comment here in the chat with your ideas, um, or you can let me know on a future cast if you get a chance to playtest later. I'm going to play for just a couple more minutes, see if I can really get my stress down. I've, I've been finding as a playtester in this game that it's actually like really hard to win um, because so many zombies show up, and if you get near a zombie, it just really increases your stress. Um, so we've got a fairly full park now, and I feel like there's almost no chance for me to uh, get enough de-stressing from these flowers before the zombies just converge. So, got some play balance issues for sure. But I also think, you know, we could have other things in a game like this. There could be something for me to collect. There could be a power-up that takes away a big chunk of stress if I can get it. Yes, all my progress is gone. Um, lots of things that you could do to make the game more compelling. So definitely thinking about things like that and just offering this as an example of um, game design in the spirit of a creative theme like Alone Together. And, you know, you're, I'm 
wanting you guys to notice that, of course, like after a month of work, even I, your instructor, am not done developing this game. There's still lots to do. You know, I need to make it possible to win this. I think I've made it a bit too hard. Um, and I, there just hasn't been time to do everything, but what I've got here is a fun prototype. Oh, look at this. Okay. So I, if you're interested in seeing what we did to create this game, um, you can actually head to um, YouTube and our YouTube channel, Make Room, will have a whole list of videos that talk you through the process Dan and I went through when we were making this game. So um, I'll head, head here to our channel so you can check it out. And I'm going to close that because I'm getting audio artifacts here. Um, yeah, so on our, our YouTube channel here, you can see um, if you go to Make Room on YouTube, we have the April 2020 instructor game here. Um, we're still making videos about how we made this game and if you're interested in what went into it. So things like creating enemy AI, putting um, that bar with the stress on it on the screen, um, all the different kinds of development things we did to put this game together, you can learn by checking out these videos. Um, we've got lots here and we're making more. And we'll be continuing to work on this game throughout the month of May. So, you know, now is definitely the time to give us feedback if you have suggestions for gameplay or things to add. Um, again, the name of the game is Pandemic Hanami. And um, Hanami is a word in Japanese that means flower viewing. So, of course, in the spirit of clicking on flowers and trying to de-stress by seeing beautiful things in a park, um, that is what we called it. So, if you were curious, that's the name of the game and that's the meaning. So, join in and, you know, anytime during the hour today, definitely let us know um, if you have any thoughts on what we should add for Pandemic Hanami. So I know Christian is out there and Ali is out there. If anyone else has joined in from our game making team at You Code It, just let me know in the chat. Um, you know, I'm just reiterating this throughout the cast today. If you do get an error, um, just seeing me, it says a network error or anything like that. Just be sure and reload your browser. Um, that should help you see me again in in the cast. Um, so definitely just don't hesitate to reload if you hit problems. That's been helping for me to get things restarted. And I've been troubleshooting my connection, so hopefully things should be just a bit better this evening. So I'm going to start out our game development talks tonight with um, some stuff about colliders. And this is actually an, in response to a question that came from Christian. And um, Christian was interested in learning about how to adjust colliders, having some issues getting um, colliders to be shaped correctly. Um, and I wanted to show you guys some stuff about that. So again, if you're there, just let me know. You can hear me in the chat. Um, I just had a couple connection blips just now, and I want to make sure you guys are still tuned in as I switch over to Unity. So if you can hear me talking right now, just say, hey, give me a wave in the chat just to make sure we're all good. Awesome. I hear Ollie saying yes. That's good. So I'm here in Unity, and I'm going to talk about colliders here in this um, in this unity scene and you know since Christian asked for this Christian I hope you're there um, let me know if you're if you're watching uh, as I get started on this so I can make sure to target it to you specifically um, fantastic I see Christian there in the chat um, if you are not Christian before I go forward on this if you are not Christian and you are listening um, I did want to recommend to folks, everyone who's joining in tonight, 
um, you know, if I happen to talk about something that applies to another person's project, I would strongly suggest that you listen, but then also why not work on your Unity project during the hour? So if I'm here explaining to uh, Christian about colliders and you already know how a collider works, that's your opportunity to open Unity on your laptop and do some work on your project. Um, so that's a shout out to Francis, to Greg, um, to Thomas, anybody else who might be here, um, you know, if I'm not focused on your project, you know, this is your hour to really work on um, progressing your game. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to pull up one more thing here before I go to Unity. Um, I'm going to start out focusing on Christian's game at the beginning here. Meanwhile, anyone else who's watching, um, I had set these goals for our, our everybody on the team, and this should be your working goal as of right now. Um, so I'm looking for Greg to build out the park in his game. Um, Francis should be focused on loading in a custom 3D mesh. Um, since we had talked about doing that with Ryzen, I want to see a different car in the scene. And I want to see you get that car working. Um, Thomas is building out an environment with movable furniture. And we want rigid body and box collider on any piece of furniture that the player avatar can move around. So we're starting today by focusing on Christian's project. And then I have a plan to hop into Thomas's. And um, I would love to um, talk about Thomas's game a little bit at the end. But if you do have questions, um, you know, Francis, Greg, anybody else from our Ucode it team, feel free to ask. Um, because I will hop into anyone's game and give you tips on whatever you're working on. I see Tayshawn in the chat. Hey, you code it friends. Welcome, one of our game makers from our New York studio tuning in tonight. Good to see you. We've got some great game development content here for you and always so glad to see cross studio folks. Of course, these casts are for everybody who is in one of our studios to come and enjoy the game development content we're putting out. So welcome, Tayshawn, Snowy Blue. It's great to see you here. Um, so again, some simple stuff here about colliders to start. Um, and, you know, again, if this is review for you, you can just listen, work on your Unity project, you know, and then when I focus on your game, pay attention. So we're talking colliders here. And there's a couple things you need to know to get the colliders right on a game object. So we've got a couch here, and I think Christian was also interested in working on the bed. Um, I'm going to put a couple different shapes in here just to show some different options for ways you can do colliders. Let's pick some different things. We have a ball. We had that in the scene. Uh, what else would be a good example here? This is pretty easy. <laughs> That's weird whatever. <laughs> They've got the pivot for that in a really weird spot. Cool. Yes, Christian is asking, can you do the couch? I, I absolutely will. All right. So if you want to put colliders on objects, there's a few things you need to do to work it out. Um, first of all, you need to know what are, what are the different kinds of colliders you could use. And of course, we have, if we type the word collider, we can see the list here. 
And when I look at this list, I'm going to see my choices. In this context, it's anything that is not 2D. So I have box, capsule, I have mesh, and I have sphere. Now, box is one of our most common colliders. Whoops, I just added that to, I don't even know what I put that on. The plane. Okay, I just put that on the floor. Let's not put a box collider on the floor. Let's put a box collider on this box. One of the most common colliders, I add it as a component and then I click edit. And often it will automatically form to the shape you've added it to. So in this case, of course, it worked. I don't even really have to do anything. I can test it out with the cat. Let's wait for the game to run. Here's my cat. And of course, there's no collider here on the couch or the soccer ball or anything, but there is one on this. So that's working nicely. And it looks like it's about the right size. You know, of course, you really do need to test these things out um, because sometimes looks can be deceiving. Okay. So, but what if it's not the shape of a box? Um, what if it's something that has a weird shape, like the couch? Now, you have a couple options here. Um, one option is that you could use a combination of box colliders. You could use a combination so you could build box colliders all around these different pieces. Um, but another option that you can do is you can add what's called a mesh collider. Now, if you add the mesh collider and it, it targets the object correctly, what's going to happen is the collider will actually wrap itself around the object like wrapping paper. So I'm going to hit play here and see if that mesh collider came correctly onto the couch. If so, oh, looks like it didn't. So this is the issue, of course, with using a mesh collider. We need it. Oh, I put it on the wrong object. Never mind. I just need to click on the couch. There we go. I'm about to say, oh, there's a big problem, and it was really just on the wrong object. Cool. Um, that should work. Hey, I see Francis in the chat. Check in the chat. Tayshawn is asking, what game is this? Um, we've got a fun third person one, and we're looking at putting some furniture out for a cat to run on. And as you can see with the mesh collider, it's sort of built in just works. Um, now, of course, the cat's sort of laying on the couch because if I want the cat to be able to walk on it, I have to set the couch as ground. So I'll make that be ground and, you know, oop, she jumps really high. Oop, now I can get on the couch. And that's pretty nice, right? So that works pretty well. Um, the thing I will say in the difference between adding like a sphere collider like to this, box collider to that square over there versus a mesh collider on the couch, um, a mesh collider is a little more expensive computationally speaking. So I often will try to avoid using a mesh collider unless I have to. Um, in this case, a mesh collider is a great option for the couch because it just automatically forms to the shape of the couch. Now, the case of the bed, you know, there's a couple options here. One option, which I've demonstrated in the past, would be to add a box collider. The other option would be to unroll the queen bed here and add a mesh collider to its child game objects. So what I would probably do is rather than doing the box, um, I would click on this bed here and I can put a mesh right on the bed. Let's mark this whole thing as ground and then see if that works. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And I didn't put it on the pillows, so that enables me to hide behind pillows, which might be fun. 
Um, so, you know, again, it's a slightly different technique than I've demoed in the past. And what I do want to show you, um, Christian, and just people in general who would be using colliders in a game, you know, manually adding them, you do commonly get in situations where you say, you know, I want to add a box collider to this. So say I added one to the bed and I want to make this box be the size of the bed. And that can be a very difficult task because you, you grab these little boxes and you start pulling on it and it looks like it's the right shape. That looks about right. And then what ends up happening is you play the game and there's something really weird about it. So let's see how that one worked out. That looked like it was the right shape. Yeah, there's something really wrong with that. <laughs> so, you know, for example, for this, it, it it's like, okay, I'm going down into the bed. Um, so that's definitely not how I wanted it. And I think we had in Christian's game, the collider was sticking way out to the right of the bed. So if you're in that situation, right, and we do get in that situation a lot because sometimes we don't want to just add a mesh collider. Sometimes we want to control the shape of the collider and add a box ourselves. If you're in that situation and you've clicked on edit collider, you have to look at this thing from all angles. You have to look at it from all angles. And so when you're looking at this down from this angle, you need to change your perspective so you can make sure that you see where this is really lined up. So you're going to need to use your tools of moving around in the scene to change your perspective on the bed. So you have different ways you can do this. You know, if I select the hand, I can click and drag and this pulls the game back and forth, just like I'm kind of sliding a pizza box in front of me. Then I'll click on the collider again. You know, now I can see it from another angle and I'm getting a sense that, you know, it's definitely lower down than I thought, right? If this line here describes the top of that box, you can see it's actually below the mattress. So another way I can get another perspective on the bed is I can hold down on the right mouse button and tilt up and down. So I'm just moving the mouse up and down to pan the camera. And what I really want to do is look at it from the top and look at it from the side. I'm going to look at it right from the top and then turn the collider back on. So again I see another issue. It looks to me like it's sticking to the side there. Um, so I definitely want to move that in where I can see it. Slide this in this direction and then I'm going to pull this out here and then let's see if I can find the the back of it. You know you really have to move these guys around. Oh, that's the bottom. Ooh, look, it's way out there. Ah, there we go. And then I'm going to move the top up so that it's flush with the top of the mattress. So you can see now if I slide it around and look at it from different angles. Look at that, I put it too high. It really does take a lot of adjusting and it's really great practice for navigating in 3D. So the more correct it gets as you do these adjustments, it will always be formed around the shape no matter what angle you look at it from. So now that I've got this set up correctly, it really does look like it's wrapped right around the bed even when I change my perspective. Don't see it sticking off anywhere weird. It just looks like the bed has this little green outline. And that's how I want it to be when I'm doing a collider manually. So let's check this out and see if it worked. Pretty good. I didn't do it perfectly. I've got it a little bit higher than I did before. 
So I can visit the bed one more time. And I now I want to look at it from this side. Yeah, you can tell if you look at it from this side. See this line is not quite up to the top. I can pull this up about here. And then I'm going to play and see where the cat lands. That's pretty good. I like that. I can still see a space between her feet and the top of the bed. So I might move it down again. But that's a pretty good box. Um, and that's really how you have to work it when you're putting colliders on objects manually. Now one thing I will say that can be very nice is a lot of game objects that you download from the asset store will come already set up with colliders so you don't have to do this. Um, but this particular asset pack did not come with colliders and so it's fantastic practice in doing that setup all by yourself. One more thing I'll say about this, you know, if you're in this situation and you're like, is it really lined up? Oh, I'm so confused. Oh, I need to line it up. Da, da, da. You know, one thing that you can do is you can go up here into the upper right corner and you can click on the different colored axes in this gizmo right here. And that will perfectly line you up so that you're looking down that axis. So I just clicked on the x-axis, which means I'm looking down that axis in 3D space. And I can use this hand, which I was just using by pressing down on the um, scroll wheel as a button. I can use this to kind of move back and forth. But regardless of whether I move this, I'm this is still set. So I'm still just looking down the x-axis. And that can be really helpful if I want to know I'm really looking at the side of the bed. So I'm really just looking straight on the side of the bed here. Let's move this so we don't have that blocking us. And you know that's really nice for me to be able to see is it sticking too high or too low. It'll let me do that adjustment that I was talking about a second ago. Similarly click on Z. And I'll take the hand, I can pan this along, and I'm looking right down the z-axis. So I turn this on, you know, this right here illustrates maybe I want to move these out a little bit to fully encompass the footboard of the bed. And then I can also look at it looking along the y-axis, which is like looking straight down. And... Uh, it looks like maybe I need to put it back out a little bit to encompass the headboard. You get the idea. So there's really a lot of just little adjusting you need to do, but ultimately this gizmo up here can be really helpful in changing your perspective so that when you want to do that examining and looking, this will sh fast track you into looking at it from different angles. So I'm going to head over here. Um, I believe Christian's scene is this one. No, here it is. Dog demo is our scene. So the original question that Christian asked was, of course, pertaining to this level that he's been diligently designing. And again, if I were in here, you know, I'm going to click on the bed and check this out. Um, we've got a collider in here and we're in the same situation where it's down there and he needs to do some collider work. You know, he can use these gizmos up the gizmo up here or he can just change his perspective using the mouse and gradually start adjusting this thing until it's in the right position. And of course, just what, what just happened to me right now is I clicked off of it. And if that happens to you, what you have to do is then click back on it again and select Edit Collider so you can get those little green dots and make the adjustment again. It's not super user friendly, I will admit. So that's what I'll be looking for you to do, Christian. Um, on the couch, we've got the L shape here. This is a great example of a place where we could use a mesh collider. 
So on this couch, what I would do here is I would remove this box collider. I'd go to add component and add a mesh collider here. It's a single object. It doesn't have any children. So that mesh collider should wrap around the couch. Let's test it out with your dog. Looks like he's outside the room. There he is. Let's put him in the room so I can try it. Ah! <laughs> and great. Looks like that worked. He's standing up on there. And then we need to Look at that, that's working pretty nicely. He's already wreaking havoc in this house. Ah, <laughs> I love it. So these, of course, Christian has done a great job of setting colliders up and I can already knock this vase off. Um, and I'm coming down here to a kitchen. This looks fantastic. Yep, so the table needs a collider and we've got some stuff set up here. Um, you know, a final suggestion I would make, this is a really great level. Um, coming together just fantastically. Uh, this right here, you know, this is so cool looking, this little kitchen element that he's got in here. And this is an example of where you would use a box collider. Um, rather than putting a mesh collider on every object, in this situation, one of the easiest ways to kind of simplify the computational load um, would be to put a single box collider that just represents this entire ca uh, counter. Um, I see Christian saying, your game does not have the TV I put. I'll have to download the latest version um, and check out the TV. So, you know, say I add a box collider here to this, this um this stove, you know, one way, again, that I could simplify the way this is working is to just give the whole thing a box collider, something like that. Um, and that, that can be a, a way to sort of problem solve with colliders so that you don't create a ton of computation so that the game drops frames and runs slowly. So... I'm going to just take a bit of a look at this. That's okay, I guess. Let's see how that looks to the dog. Seems fine. And I just need to mark it as ground. Cool. Um, we got this and we got that. Let's check that out one more time. Ah, that soccer ball keeps hitting me on the head. This is a sweet little house. I'm really digging it. And yeah, it's not perfect, but you know, just giving an example here of like a situation where it makes sense to, um, uh, use a box collider instead of, again, putting a mesh collider on every object. The, the least amount of colliders you can use in a game, the better. All right, so see some things coming through in the chat. I'm going to switch gears to Thomas's game. And the changes I just made, I'm going to go ahead and send over to Christian. So I didn't actually change that much here, um, but if you want to use those changes, they will be there for you. It is interesting that my game has extra walls. Yeah, I don't know why this is here. So if that one's not in your game, let me just move it. Um, let's check out this TV. Ooh, that looks great. Uh, yes, and the TV already has a collider, which means, you know, happily as the dog, I can jump up and just knock that thing off. Oh my goodness. Goodbye, TV. <laughs> I love this. Da -da 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 
da 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 Let's push it off the edge of the level. See ya. Bye. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So um, Thomas is saying, I can't see any of your changes. Um, I'm going to switch gears to Thomas's game just to show some stuff in there. Um, Francis, I know you're here tuned in. Um, you know, folks who have questions, Francis, if you have questions, um, and if Greg is here, you know, if you guys have things that you want me to talk about, just let me know what those things are. And Thomas Wise, um, I do have a, a little thing in here that I rigged up just before class today to finish demonstrating what I was talking about in the last cast. And last week I got to totally cut off because the connection was so bad. And I didn't finish talking about this um, furniture trigger situation that I was setting up. And I wanted to finish talking about that because I, I'm really excited about this game. I think it's dope. And I wanted to give Thomas some basic scripts and game systems to do a trigger furniture pushing kind of situation. Um, so Thomas, I'll demonstrate this if you know if you're watching, and then I'll push the changes so you can use the scripts I've got in your game. Um, but the way this is set up, I created this as a trigger because if you remember, Thomas's interest for this game was to have the main character, which is a chair, um, push pieces of furniture into different areas of the level. And of course, the goal being to get all of the furniture into the right location. So I set this up here. This is sort of a, I imagined this is like the location that this chair is trying to pu push this couch into. And then I've also got some canvas here where I'm going to display some text in the upper right of the screen that counts how many pieces of furniture have been successfully pushed into their location. So let me just run this. Again, I've got total furniture pushed zero is listed here. And I have, of course, set up that couch with a collider and a rigid body so I can push it with the chair. And I've got some logic attached to that collider over there where when the couch touches it, it's going to up my total furniture pushed count to one. There it goes. So even when it just overlaps with it, oh, I and it's uh, incrementing it again, which is funny. It should only say one. Um, but the idea, of course, is generally that, you know, I've got an object here. When the other object overlaps with it, my count increases. So let me show you how that works again. I push it. And this chair is a little bit hard to control. Uh, total furniture pushed one, you know, so now he's in the right location. Um, and of course, this is what I was trying to show you guys last week, uh, got cut off. Um, but I will give you a broad sort of explanation of how you would set this up to work. And then I'm going to give this over to Thomas so that he can play with this system and start extending it into an actual design for a game. Um, so what I've got here is three objects and I have two scripts plus a UI canvas. Um, this one right here just called cube. Let's actually change the name of this to trigger so we know. We've got this couch here called white couch. We've got the canvas with the text in the upper right. And then I also have this fun little script called Game Manager. Now you can see the entire script of the Game Manager over here in the right. And all I do in that Game Manager is I count how many pieces of furniture have been pushed into their triggers, starting with zero. And then 
I continuously update the text on the screen with that number. So if total furniture pushed is zero, then it's going to say total furniture pushed zero on the screen. And you can see, of course, at the beginning of the game that that's exactly what happens. It says total furniture pushed zero. And that's, of course, because total furniture pushed over here in this script starts out at zero. And this number doesn't change until this interaction between the couch and the trigger changes it. Meanwhile, on the trigger, I've got a couple things here. I have a script that takes in the name of the furniture that needs to go there. And so, of course, I had to type white couch with the exact letters that are in the name field for this object. And then I have a reference here. This is called a reference to the game manager. And here, this just allows this trigger to communicate with the game manager. Um, so let's check out that script and I'll show you how it works. Pretty simple. It says, when I hit this trigger that's attached to the object that I'm on, I'm the script, I increase the total furniture pushed number in the game manager. So we were talking again about the game manager having this total furniture pushed number. When this one is run into by this game object, that number increases. So if I were to change this to something else, say I wrote blue couch, now that number is not going to increase. So I'll push this over here and up, oh, I'm not getting a number increase because it's looking for white couch to run into it. Similarly, if I wanted to do something like this, let's say I make this be called easy chair. I could click on this here and type easy chair. And then you can probably guess what would happen. So this is not going to do it, but my easy chair, oops, aha. <laughs> I need to put a rigid body and a collider on my easy chair. Let's give that that. And we could ask Christian if we wanted a mesh collider or a box, but I'm going to give it a box. Now we should see furniture placed go up to one. There it goes. So it, it barely even touched it, but you can see when it touches it, that number goes up. Um, I see Thomas saying, this would be useful if I could actually see anything but the loading circle. That is our, our normal level of, of Unity enjoyment, which is waiting for Unity to load. I have nothing but sympathy for you. Um, if it does it for too long, one option, of course, is always to reset Unity. Just close it and open it again. Um, so just showing a couple other things you could do with this. So you know, say I have this one here. Oop, there we go. I have this trigger here and I make this be white couch. Let's say I want to make another one somewhere else for the easy chair. Um, I would actually probably do that by Let's see if I'm still buffering here. I just noticed a connection blip. Okay, looks like I'm there. Take this, duplicate it, and drag it over here. And then what I could do here is say, I'm gonna make this one be the one for the easy chair. And I'm gonna resize it so that it looks more like the shape of the one that's supposed to go there. So I could take it here, you know, I might even rotate it just to give a sense. And then 
now I've got two furniture placement locations. So I've got this, and now I'm going to push this one over here. So there I've got my two. So obviously there's some stuff you'd need to work on with this, like the physics of this are a little weird, you know? Um, you might consider doing something where when the couch hits the trigger, you code it to snap into place. Um, that would be a, a pretty simple thing to code. So instead of having to adjust it exactly to fit in that box, you could code a line where, you know, when it hits the trigger, that couch is automatically rotated and relocated to a preset location right in the middle of the box. That would be really satisfying. Um, and you could do the same thing with all of these triggers. The other thing that's a, a sort of a simple fix in a physics situation like this is to take an object that you're pushing and lock the uh, um, some of the constraints here so that it doesn't tip over. Um, this can help. Um, we don't want to freeze the position because we want it to be able to slide on the ground. This will be a little bit of trial and error, but you know, that makes it a lot easier to push. So just in comparison with this, like all rotating and everything, um, versus this one, I've got the rotation kind of, uh, locked so that it can only go forward and that just feels already like a lot more satisfying to do. I don't really want it to rotate, I just want it to move in front of me. Um, so again th the way I did that was I clicked on the the object there, went over here to its rigid body and I just checked all the boxes under freeze rotation. So clicking here I'm going to freeze those as well. And I'm going to just check how that furniture kind of feels to push. Oof, that's so much more satisfying. I immediately like that better. There we go. All right, two down, 100 to go. Just kidding. Um, so Thomas, you've got a trigger system here to play with. And I would love to see what you do with this now that it's there in your game. Um, I'll save what I just did and push it. Um, tweak, furniture physics, this will give you some examples, but of course it's up to you to set this up the way you want it to work. Um, in a future cast, we could talk about the aspect of it that involves music, but a first playable for this game would definitely be to set this up with the right furniture and the right triggers distributed out um, throughout this pretty big map. Um, so we're coming in right around 8 o'clock and I wanted to let you guys know that as the cast is over, again, to my Ucodit people, if you're part of the Ucodit studio, you can join me in my office hours at the link provided to you in your email um, starting around 8 o'clock. And what I'll do from now is I'll answer Christian's last question about colliders and then I will log the cast off and be hanging out in my Google Meet office hours for the next 30 minutes for your questions. Um, but I did want to answer um, Christian's question, which is about the collider on the bed. So again, the thing that I would say for this bed, honestly, if you're having a lot of problems with this and you just can't get the box to uh, form right, we may end up just wanting to do um, a mesh collider. Yeah, so we've still got this uh, situation where there's something over here. Yeah, it's something is in the air, right? So let's actually see if we can find that and figure out, you know, to me what looks like is happening is um, there's another object in this room that has um, a collider on it. So first, let's see if we can find where that box collider is coming from. 
It may be on another object. It's not that. Let's see. That's there. Could it be here? No. So mysterious. So Christian's asking, how do I delete the box collider? That's a great question. Um, look at that. What? <laughs> how did we get that in there? <laughs> so, so we've got to find whatever object has that collider attached to it, which is just so bizarre. Um, one thing I do notice is there's two beds here. Um, let me wait till my stream reconnects and then I will perhaps delete one of the beds. <laughs> Ugh. Um, I think I'm back. I just wanted to finish this. It's just eight o'clock now, but, um, so it turns out, um, Christian, if you're still watching, for whatever reason, there's two beds in this and the beds were exactly in the same spot. Oh, darn it. Just waiting for my stream to come back. Hello. I am literally just trying to say one more thing and this is really making it hard. Um, are folks still listening? Because I, I literally had one more thing to say, like one more thing. Uh, well, for my own sense of peace, I'm going to finish this even if the person who I was doing this for is not listening. Christian, if you're still there, say so. Um, so I figured out, I think, what the problem is. And it appears the case that there was two duplicate beds in the room. There was two beds in here and one of these beds has a gigantic collider attached to it. Um, so if I click on this one, I've got a collider here. And then this one, we have one there. So I am actually going to delete this extra bed. And then for this one, you know, if you want to get rid of the collider and add a mesh, the way to get rid of a component in Unity is going to be clicking on this little gear here and then you can go remove component. So again, gear, remove component. And now there should be nothing in the room there. There should be nothing. And, you know, now we've just got our sort of slightly off center box collider. And since we did find out that we could add a mesh collider just to the mattress here, um, I think I'm going to do that. Let's see. You know, it's interesting too, though. This doesn't have a collider on it, and yet I'm still able to walk on the bed, which is super mysterious. Like, we've got one in here somewhere. 
you know, which game object is responsible for that is interesting. Oh my gosh, there's even more beds. There's so many beds. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, there was three beds. Okay, that's the last one. You know, now we know what the problem is. There's three beds in there duplicated with three different colliders on them. So that is a really interesting situation that you could apparently get into. And now I can just add this mesh collider and be done. All right, so there were, again, there was three beds, um, and they were all just in the exact same spot. And I think I've got it all fixed now. So if you download my latest version, this is what you'll get. Um, so that was a really fun mystery, and I can't say that I've ever seen something like that before. Um, but of course, it just shows you that, you know, if you took this, and you duplicated it a bunch of times, you know, it really is possible that you can just like have a bunch of beds, right? Like, so we were in this situation where we have all these different beds overlapping with each other and, but it all looks like it's just one bed. So very, very, very weird situation that can only happen in a game and not in real life. But the moral of the story is, you know, because you can bend reality, it can be helpful to look over here in the hierarchy and notice, oh my gosh, I've got like four beds, right? And then I delete all those and there's still a bed there, which is the one that we're using. So we have fixed the bed. We've solved the mystery. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm going to hop into my office hours until 830. So if you have questions about game making tonight and you want to get those questions answered, you can join me in Google Meet. You'll need audio and video, which your laptop should have if you are with us from Ucode it. Um, otherwise, I will cast to you next week, at which time I should have my fancy, fast new router, which would mean no connection problems. Um, and again, just shouting out to my folks here to continue on these goals, which are your working goals uh, for these game projects. Um, this is what I'm looking for you guys to do. So Christian, Greg, Francis, and Thomas, all of this stuff I know is within reach for you guys. And I'll be excited to um, look at your games throughout the week and see what you accomplish. All right, I'm going to log. I will talk to you guys soon. <laughs>